Firstly, thank you very much to those of you who are here today. It's wonderful to see you in this virtual environment. I am very sorry that I have you all muted and your cameras off, but it's just to allow things to run smoothly. I hope that this won't be a barrier between our interaction. So if you have any comments or questions on anything we discuss or go through today, please do pop them in the chat box and we will have a question and answer session at the end of the training webinar. Just to introduce myself and what I'm doing here today, my name is Stephanie and I'm from the company Learning Curve and we are the African providers of Primal Pictures. I am at the I am an anatomist, let's try that again, and I'm part of the team that provides regular support and training for optimal use of Primal Pictures. And today we're going to discuss the content available on Primal Pictures that is relevant to the clinical anatomy of the head and neck, and hopefully translate some of that theoretical knowledge into practice. Now, with that being said, I would like to preface the fact that I'm not a clinician, but I do have experience in lecturing anatomy and I am fairly aware of the clinical relevance and importance of anatomy education. And I will do my best to put my clinical hat on today. So just a bit of an agenda of what we will be going through. I will give you an overview of the specific title, titles or pieces of information that we'll go through today. And then we'll jump onto the Primal Pictures platform. And we're going to go through three titles in detail today. We're going to go through audiology, otolaryngology, and speech language pathology. Now, within these three titles, we find a wonderful wealth of clinical application and clinical knowledge to help translate that information from paper to practice. And then we will do a question and answer session at the end. When it comes to the clinical information available on Primal Pictures, the content really shines through in the head and neck region and is very plentiful in this region, which is why we're going to focus on it today. And I would also like to mention that this is not a lecture on the clinical anatomy of the head and neck. It's a training session on where you can find all of that valuable clinical information on Primal Pictures so that you can hopefully use it in your future teaching strategies. All right, so before I go into information about the titles, I should mention that if you don't currently have access to any of the titles that we do work through today, you are welcome to email us here at Learning Curve and we can discuss opening up a free 30 day trial to these titles if you would like to look at them in more detail and decide if they are something you want board in the future. The first title we're going to look at is audiology, and this gives you all of the necessary anatomy and physiology knowledge that is relevant to the audiology profession, which is really going to help in the prevention, diagnosis and remediation of hearing disorders, the management of cochlear implants, hearing conservation and rehabilitation, and the evaluation of any balance disorders. The audiology title is, pre is presented in a very similar way to the anatomy and physiology title. So if you've used that one before, then you should be very comfortable in using this title. It's a very much guided learning experience with lots of interactive activities and exercises in between, which we'll see in more detail when we jump onto the actual platform. Then the second title we're going to take a look at in the clinical specialties is otolaryngology, or this profession is sometimes otherwise known as ENT or in those and throat doctors or specialties, and it's going to give you a lot of clinical anatomy related to the head and neck. Now, this title is presented in the same way as 3D Atlas. If you do know 3D Atlas, we will see a range of 3D models. We have interactive MRI images of the head and neck region. There are slides, which are 2D images relating to anatomy, development or embryology, normal cadaveric dissection, and then clinical slides, which show clinical surgical dissections, 
um, still shots of different parts of procedures and information like that. Then the very exciting part is when we get to the movies. And this is where we have patient examination movies and surgical procedures. This is then followed with movement animations, helping you better understand how different movements are achieved by the head and neck region. And it finishes off with clinical explanatory text, which we have in the areas of development, patient examination, and surgical procedures. And lastly, we will finish off with speech language pathology. Now, this again is presented very similarly to 3D Atlas. If you've used it before, we again have 3D models, slides, movies, animations, and clinical text relating to speech language pathology. I don't think it's necessary to go through it in detail now because we will go through it in detail when we jump into the platform. All right, so before we jump into it, I do want to mention that once our webinar series has concluded, you will receive a recording of this webinar. And we have recently moved over to housing our webinar recordings on YouTube. So we will send you a link to this webinar recording on YouTube. And I would also like to mention that on that YouTube channel, we have short form training videos, which are kind of like a crash course on primal pictures and specific to individual topics or titles. So if you are interested in looking at that before we send you the link to the YouTube channel, you can look up Learning Curve SA on YouTube and you'll find our resource bank there. All right, but let's jump into the platform. Let me change which screen I'm sharing. And let's dive into the meat of our agenda for today. So here I am on anatomy.tv online, otherwise known as Primal Pictures, and I am in the clinical specialties title. And just like I previously mentioned, today we'll go through audiology, otolaryngology, and speech language pathology. So let's jump straight into our first one, which is audiology. I'm not going through those nitty gritty details of how to access primal pictures and all of that information, but if you have any issues, your librarian should be able to help you out or you're welcome to pop us an email here at Learning Curve. Firstly, let's just start with the orientation of the page in case you haven't used this title or a similar title before. On the left hand side, you will find the menu bar. In the middle, we have our main viewing pane or our interaction pane. And on the right hand side, you have your information pane. The first icon in our menu is where audiology has been broken down into different topics. And these topics are going to cover the gross anatomy, the microanatomy, and the physiology that is relevant to know in the audiology profession or specialty. So these topics will follow in a logical sequence to guide the learning process. And this is a really wonderful place for educators to pull resources for their lesson plans or lectures. For our example today, and one that I think really showcases the three dimensional aspect of primal pictures and beautiful imagery is the anatomy of equilibrium and balance. It's a topic quite far down in this entire module, but I think it's a really great example because the anatomy of the inner ear is quite difficult to understand, especially when we get to the cellular level of the mechanoreceptors and the various elements involved in equilibrium balance. Now I'm going to minimize these tops by clicking topics by clicking on the book icon once again, and now we can focus on being guided through this process. Please bear in mind that this can be used as a live lecture tool, just like I'm doing in our session here today. But when we go through the menu, you will also see how to download all of this content, which can be placed in your lectures or lesson plans. And I will also show you how this content can be embedded in your learning management system. So in our information pane, at the top of each topic or lesson, you will get learning objectives, which can be maximized with the plus icon. And this will tell you what is going to be covered in this topic or lesson. 
So here we'll distinguish between static and dynamic equilibrium. We'll identify the cellular components of the maculae as well as the crista ampullaris, and we will explain how various elements function in dynamic equilibrium. And we start off with an introduction to the anatomy of equilibrium and balance. Now, the vestibule and the semicircular canals are the elements of the inner ear that are involved in equilibrium balance. And that is explained to us here and the different mechanoreceptors that are involved in static equilibrium and dynamic equilibrium are introduced. And while we have this introduction to balance equilibrium, we have a wonderful 3D model over here to help us visualize what is being explained to us. If you haven't interacted with this kind of 3D model before, I'll go through briefly how you can do that. There are rollover labels for all visible structures. And if you select a structure, it will be highlighted and the name given to you at the top of the screen. You can move between different layers of the anatomy using the up and down arrows. So as I move upwards, various other portions of the anatomy will become visible and I could also move between these different layers by simply selecting them in our information pane or I can guide the experience myself more so with the up and down arrows and here I can now see okay there's the vestibule and here are my semicircular canals and I could rotate this model to better visualize the different semicircular canals and other aspects of the vestibule. Now, once we're done with understanding the introduction to the important anatomy involved in equilibrium balance, we now start to take a, a more focused approach to static and dynamic equilibrium. So static equilibrium is defined here for us, and then we can explore the various important components involved in static equilibrium. And once we've gone through that more so gross anatomy, which feels a little bit misleading if we think about the inner ear, which is very, very tiny, but this is still the gross anatomy. And we have an interactive learning exercise before we move to the microanatomy. And I think that this is very difficult for students to understand and conceptualize without being able to visually appreciate it. So here we have the microanatomy of the maculae in a wonderful interactive way. And as we learn about the different components, these will be clearly pointed out to us like the hair cells, the stereocilia, the kinocilium, and so on and so forth. And once we are finished with the anatomy of static equilibrium, we move on to dynamic equilibrium. And now we focus on the semicircular canals. Okay, so the purpose of today isn't to lecture you, it's to show you how you can use this content and what content is available. And I think that gives you a good idea of sort of how these lessons work and the kind of information you can find in the different topics. Now that we've finished with that, let's move over to the rest of the icons in the menu and see what else is available here. Next is simply an alphabetical index, just like a traditional textbook would have, and it's just a different way that you can navigate your way through information. But while we are here, I would like to mention that there is a search bar at the top of the information pane to also help you navigate your way or look for specific pieces of information. After that, this little chemistry icon collects all of the interactive learning exercises that are dotted throughout the lessons. So if you or your students are wanting to go straight to the activities instead of scrolling all the way through the topics, you can find them here. And the same goes for the light bulb icon. These are the different quizzes that are dotted throughout the lessons to test the students' knowledge. Now, after that, we have some wonderful application style information. In this section, we start off with clinical cases relevant to the audiology profession, and these really help apply knowledge into the clinical setting and give you real life examples of why it's important to know this anatomy and physiology. Now, as we go through our content, I'm going to focus a lot of what we look at 
um, intercochlear implants within the ear, and then different lesions and pathology that affect the larynx. So here I've chosen cochlear implant as our clinical example, and we will take a look at more information relating to cochlear implants later on. But here in audiology for the clinical cases, you will receive an overview, description, candidates, successes, side effects, the future, and the role of audiologists in each condition. Some of these headings may vary slightly depending on the condition and what's relevant to know for that condition, but you will get a very holistic view on what this condition is and how it can be treated. After the clinical um, examples, we have aging. So unfortunately, as we age, our anatomy and physiology does too. And what's really important for audiologists to understand is how hearing loss occurs and how balance or equilibrium can be altered. And those are two things that we generally see with the aging process. So here that's clearly outlined to us. Now, lastly, we have case studies, and this is where students can really test their knowledge. And these are also wonderful exercises that you can allocate to your students to help engage those critical thinking skills. The example that I've chosen is otitis media with effusion. And here we have Sarah, who is a three and a half year old female, and she was seen for an audiological evaluation. We learn more about Sarah's case, and at the end of the day, she is suffering from otitis media with effusion. After we learn more about Sarah and her case, there are various questions posed to the students that they then need to try and answer, which will start with more introductory basic questions and lead into more application style questions. So we start off with what is otitis media with effusion? And excuse me, we end off with what development aspects of communication should be addressed in a young child who has this condition. All right, now let's close all of those up and I just want to go back to this 3D model before we go through the rest of the icons in the menu. So after this clinical aging and case study information, you have an icon which allows you to favorite any content to easily revisit at a later stage. If you know anything about personal profiles or if you have set up a personal profile, I would like to highlight that one of the benefits to having a personal profile is that all of your favorites are stored to the cloud. So that means no matter what device you access Primal Pictures on, you will always be able to view your favorites. If you are not logged into a personal profile, your favorited content will be stored to the device. After that, you can share a link to anything you're viewing on Primal Pictures. And then very importantly, you can embed it. So 3D models can be embedded in isolation or with the information bar connected to it. If you would like to embed just the 3D model, then you don't select embed text. If you would like the information pane to accompany it, you will select embed text. You can choose whether or not you include a link to where the information came from on Primal Pictures. And then you can select your learning management style, or if yours isn't listed here, just a generic iframe tag. And then once your code has been generated, you can copy and paste that into your embed function on your LMS and really tailor the information that your students are being presented with. Okay, and then another very important thing, downloading content to either use offline and insert into your lesson plans or lectures. Any image of a 3D model can be saved, and you can also save all of the information in the information pane. So let's just take a look at an example. Here I've just downloaded an image of this 3D model, which is on a transparent background. So whatever color I pasted onto or whatever information I pasted onto that will be visible behind this image. It looks black right now because my PC is on dark mode. And you can also save all of this information in the information pane, either as a simple text document or as a PDF, which is my preferred way. And here we have a wonderful PDF covering that entire topic or lesson. Now let's just go back to where we were. 
The last icon in the menu is simply some settings that you can change according to personal preferences. OK, but that brings us to the end of audiology, very focused anatomy and physiology learning that is relevant to the audiology specialty or profession. Next thing we're going to jump into is otolaryngology. Now, this is going to focus on the clinical anatomy of the head and neck that is relevant to otolaryngology. And here we will find quite a lot of focused information to the larynx. And I find this incredibly helpful because I personally, as a student, found the larynx to be something very difficult to understand. It has a lot of very small um, moving parts and just numerous structures that work together to do the various functions of the larynx. So this title I was very impressed with the first time I got to use it. And the same goes for all of the clinical specialty titles that we're exploring today. OK, so once again, just orientating ourselves, we have the menu bar on the left hand side, our main viewing pane in the middle and our information bar on the right hand side. Now this works the same way as 3D Atlas, which functions fairly similarly to anatomy and physiology. But the first icon in our menu gives us the normal anatomy 3D models of the head and neck. So let's take a look at, let's, let's keep it consistent and take a look at the ear over here. These 3D models work the same as the 3D models in Atlas and in anatomy and physiology and in audiology. So we can rotate the models using our mouse, the left and right arrows. You can move between different layers of anatomy using the up and down arrows. You still have the rollover labels for all of the visible structures. And if you select any structure, it's going to be highlighted. And this time in our information pane, as we move between different structures, you will get the relevant anatomical information for those specific structures. So you can learn more about the theory while you visually explore the structures. OK, after the 3D models, we have MRI imaging content of the head and neck. This is available in various different sections. I'm going to take the sagittal section as our example. And you'll see that when you open up the MRI, there is a digital 3D model twin. And this is going to help you interpret or understand what's happening in the MRI. Now, everything here is still fully interactive. So when you select a structure, it will be highlighted and you'll get the relevant anatomical information about it at the top of your screen. OK, and you can move between different layers using the up and down arrows. And at any moment, you can select structures and cross reference them between the 3D model and your MRI to really help apply a model that students are more comfortable with into a real world clinical example. Now, after the imaging content, we get still slides or 2D images in a range of different categories. Some are still interactive, some are not. And we start off with normal anatomy illustrations. These are usually labeled diagrams. And you'll see that they're broken into a wide category um, of structures. And these are really great for getting labeled images for lectures. Here we have an image that is depicting auditory transmission. After the anatomical illustrations, you have developmental illustrations. We unfortunately know that embryology isn't enjoyed by many students, and it's quite difficult to understand that th the three-dimensionality of it. So these developmental illustrations are very helpful in helping the students visualize what's happening during the development of different structures. After that, we have normal anatomy dissection slides. Um, so one of my favorites is this cross section, and this is really helpful in helping the students um, kind of visualize the nasopharynx, the oropharynx, and then the laryngopharynx. And most of the structures on this dissection 
are still interactive in that they are rollover labels and you can select various structures to highlight them and learn more about them. After the dissection slides, we have the clinical slides. So these are 2D images that relate to the different types of procedures and examinations that you can see on your screen right now. And as I said, I'm going to focus a lot of our efforts on the larynx and cochlear implants today while we work between these different specialties. So here we have a range of different images pointing out important surgical anatomy during different parts of a cochlear implant and at different stages of dissection. We also have a diagram that's kind of showing us how a cochlear implant works. All right, so here we're really starting to dive into the clinical side of things, which is very exciting. And after that, we simply have still MRI images. All right, now let's move on to the movies. Here again, we get to dive even deeper into the clinical side. We have wonderful clinical videos broken down into patient examinations and surgical procedures. So let's use a physical examination of the ear as our example for the patient examination. And I'm going to mute this, but please do know that this is a narrated video. And I will briefly scroll through it, but this video will go through various different parts of the pinna or the auricular anatomy that is important to take a look at when you are doing a visual examination of the external ear. And we will also get into using an oroscope to then visualize the deeper structures of the external ear or our external auditory meatus and the tympanic membrane. You'll see that when we get to that part, it will point out different points of anatomy that are important to examine and visualize um, with the tympanic membrane over here. And once again, all of this is narrated and well explained to the viewer if we have the sound on, but you're stuck with listening to my voice for today. Okay, after the patient examinations, I should also say stroboscopy is another wonderful one. And we're going to take a look at quite a few um, stroboscopy visualizations later on when we move more so to the larynx. But let's get to the surgical procedures. Now, this is going to walk you through the steps of various different surgeries. And are we surprised that I'm choosing cochlear implantation? No, we are not. But here again, I'm going to need this. We have a narrated movie explaining the different parts of a cochlear implantation. Now, I think that this is fantastic technology. And maybe I'm a little bit ignorant because I'm not a clinician, but I still kind of wonder at and marvel at the ways that a cochlear implant works. And I think it's quite incredible. So here, the students will be walked through the various dissection steps and implantation steps involved in the cochlear implant, which is quite amazing. I'll just scroll through a little bit so that you can get an understanding of, of what these videos look like. But if you were to watch these yourselves, you would be able to appreciate the narration and that everything is well and clearly explained to the viewer. All right, so after our surgical procedures, which are very difficult to not get stuck on because they're incredibly interesting, we have movement animations. Now these are going to be at movie versions of animations showing various movements of the head and neck region. And a lot of these movie animations are mirrored or the same as the animations we'll take a look at in a second. But what's important with the movie version is that you can download them and insert them into your PowerPoint lectures, for example, or to use offline. So the movie version is much better for use in PowerPoint or offline use, and the animation versions can't be downloaded because they are interactive and online. OK, but with the movie version of the movement animations, let's take a look at the mucosal wave as an example. Um, like I mentioned at the beginning, the larynx is just 
in my opinion, a very tricky structure to properly understand and visualize, especially as an undergraduate student. And the mucosal wave or how sound is produced is a very, very important function in the larynx, but also in head and neck clinical specialties. So here we can, for example, visualize the mucosal wave from different sections. And then after those movement animations, a little bit less exciting, but still very important, surface anatomy movies showing different movements of the head and neck. All right. Now, in the animation section, as I mentioned earlier, you will find very similar information to these movies, but these animations are interactive. So let's go to movements of the cervical spine, for example. Here we simply have contralateral rotation of the head and cervical spine, and you can play and interact with this animation with quite a lot of flexibility and freedom. You'll see that I have rollover labels for all of my visible structures. And if I select any structure, it will be highlighted and the relevant explanatory information given to me. OK, and then after the animations, we have the clinical text specifically relevant to otolaryngology. We have, again, explanatory information about the development of specifically the pharyngeal arches, the clefts, and the pouches. This is simply going to be explanatory information over here that the students can read through, or you can use this to pull content to help your teaching strategies. After development, we have patient examination. So we had some patient examination movies, but this is explanatory text guiding you through various different examinations, like examining the external ear. So this is helping cater towards different learning styles. Some may prefer a movie, a narrated movie that explains it to them. Others will prefer to read through it themselves. So here we have all of those important steps laid out during an examination of the external ear. We also have explanatory information for surgical procedures. So again, we're not very surprised that I'm going to go to otology and cochlear implant. And here you'll see I have a range of different explanatory information about a cochlear implant. I have the introduction. I have the indications and contraindications. We have the important surgical anatomy, preoperative um, preparations, operative techniques, post-operative considerations, and pediatric considerations. Okay, and once again, this is all explanatory text information. Okay, and then after this, you should recognize some of the rest of the icons in the menu. We'll kind of speed through the rest because we've gotten through the meat of the content here in otolaryngology now. This icon in the menu is simply where 3D models of normal anatomy take a more systemic and structure specific focus. OK, so the last time we looked at a lot of 3D models of the normal anatomy was in this icon. And this is where kind of a regional approach is taken to the 3D models. Down here, a systemic approach is taken to the 3D models. So if we go to special senses and then to the ear, are we surprised? No, we are not. We have wonderful 3D models that we have actually taken a look at today already, but just housed in different places. OK, then speeding through, we have our alphabetical index for navigation. You can favorite any content and it's prompting me to tell me why a personal profile is important. We can share a link to anything, embed anything in the learning management system or onto a website. Download any content for offline use except the animations. The animations, you need to use the movie version of the animations. And we have some settings that we can change according to our personal preferences. OK, but that brings us to the end of otolaryngology. Now let's jump into speech language pathology. So once again, this will function very similarly to 3D Atlas, and it's firstly going to focus on the normal anatomy relevant to speech language pathology. And after that, 
we will dive into more clinical style information. Just orientating ourselves once again, as we love to do in anatomy, we have our menu on our left hand side, our main viewing pane or our interaction pane in the middle and our information pane on the right hand side. The first icon, just like the previous title, includes 3D views or 3D models, but more so focused to speech language pathology. So naturally, the first thing it opens up here is a 3D model of the larynx. And can I just take a moment to say that the first time I understood the 3D anatomy of the larynx properly was when I interacted with a 3D model on primal pictures. I had done dissections. I'd worked with all of the textbooks. I had even lectured speech language pathology students on the larynx. And don't get me wrong, I would never give anyone false information, but I was relying heavily on resources to explain the structures to the students. And the first time I saw this and interacted with this, it's when I truly had the penny drop moment. So you can rotate these models to view them from various angles, just like the other models. It's interactive. We have our rollover labels, and our explanatory text, and you can move between different layers of the anatomy. Moving more superficially here to eventually include our mucosa, and now we can visualize the vocal folds. If any content like the 3D models does move a bit jittery on your side, please note just because I'm sharing my screen over the internet, this experience is smooth for the end user. If anything looks a bit jittery while I play around like this, please know that it will be nice and smooth for you if you were to do this yourselves. All right, but after the standard 3D views or 3D models, we once again have still 2D slides or images. We start off with anatomy illustrations or 2D images that relate to speech language pathology. So we have some images on the special senses, which include the eyes and um, hearing. And we also have some lovely laryngeal content. And we're really going to get into some exciting clinical content for the larynx very soon. So for the clinical slides, we have 2D image images of a range of lesions and pathology that typically affect our vocal folds, processes, and the larynx. Um, here, for example, we have an image of a unilateral right true vocal fold polyp, and we can clearly see that there. There are a range of different lesions and um, pathologies available here. I think another very um, relevant one is typical laryngitis that clinicians will see very, very often. So let me find, here we go. This is an image of chronic ulcerative laryngitis. It's not one of the better images. It is a little bit grainy, um, but I know we have another laryngitis image here. There we go. This one's a little bit more clear and you can see the irritation and the inflammation in the laryngitis over here. Okay, so a whole host of different lesions and pathology available here. And I think it's really important for students to see these before they are in the clinical setting. I think it's very daunting when a student sees something for the first time once they're in the clinical setting. So to be able to have some context and to see that before they're actually in the clinic or the hospital is a really wonderful opportunity. Up to the clinical slides, we have patient information illustrations, which firstly are a wonderful learning resource for students, but also fabulous to use to help educate patients and help them understand what's going on in their bodies. So these are um, sort of drawn out animations that show various lesions affecting the vocal folds or cords. We also have some images that help explain what different procedures are and what they do, like a, a laryngoscopy, a laryngoscopy, let's try that one again. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, there's a very comprehensive list available here. We also have some patient information going through the different phases of swallowing. Now, after our slides, we have some, mov some movies. Again, you will see a lot of the content is similar between the movies and between the animations. 
A lot of these animations have been made into movie form to allow them to be downloaded and inserted into lectures. But there are also some other movies available here that aren't in the animation, so let me not jump ahead. We sort of have the normal actions and biomechanics relevant to speech language pathology and gross motor movements, but there are a few things here that I want to give a bit of a spotlight to. Firstly, examination movies. Very helpful, very important. If we go to video stroboscopy, for example, and I'm going to mute this because we have the patient doing various different E and R sounds as the clinician wants to visualize different parts or aspects of the larynx. But here we have a wonderful video showing a video stroboscopy and we can see the larynx in movement and we can see the vocal folds working to achieve different sounds. This is showing a normal or normal findings rather during a video video stroscopy. We're really testing our limits here with the words today. Um, and again, I think it's really wonderful for students to be exposed to this for the first time on, in this sort of platform before seeing it for the first time in a clinical setting. Another thing I would like to highlight or have a, a moment of silence for are the phonetic animations. What is very relevant in speech language pathology and in therapies used in speech language pathology is understanding the different mouth and throat and tongue aspects involved in achieving either the consonant or the vowel group sounds. Now here we have movies that are both voiced and voiceless for the consonant groups and the vowel groups. Let's actually use a voiceless example because I don't want to just confuse you and have lots of sounds coming from everywhere, but you'll see that for the sound here, we can see the different elements involved in achieving that sound and how different aspects of the anatomy move and change as the sound is achieved. Now, this is, again, a wonderful resource for students to help them learn, but this is a great thing to use in patient education when you are doing therapy. Okay, so I'm not going to take you through all of the movies. I wanted to highlight those specific ones. Um, and I'm not going to go through the animations individually. I think you have a good idea of what they are, but these will highlight the different muscular and skeletal elements involved in achieving these movements. And then we do have um, what deserves a little bit of a spotlight. We have animations showing the different aspects involved in respiration. Now, after that, we move to the clinical text. And we start off with some helpful information or explanatory information for normal functions that are very important to understand in speech language pathology, like swallowing, voice production, and articulation. So here you'll get really wonderful explanatory information about all of these normal functions. These videos take a while to, to load, but if you ever open up clinical text that has a video that's going to help explain it, it will load in your main viewing pane over here. But I'm not going to wait for that to load. I'm going to move on to the clinical correlates. And here we have explanatory information for the evaluation procedures, vocal disorders, and swallowing problems. So let's start in evaluation procedures. And here we have the wonderful video stroboscopy. And right now, that video showing a normal video stroboscopy is loading. but to cater to different learning styles, we have explanatory information about what this procedure is, when it will be necessary, and the sorts of important findings or indications you will be looking for. All right, after evaluation procedures, we have vocal disorders. Let's take a look at chronic laryngitis as an example. Right now, an image or a movie showing chronic laryngitis will be loading, but it does take a little while. And we have lovely explanatory information about the definition, the causes, the clinical prevention, excuse me, clinical presentation, including signs and symptoms of laryngitis. And we have adverse impacts on function, management, and then the references. Okay, and after vocal disorders, we have explanatory information about swallowing problems, 
um, after cancer and after patients who have unfortunately suffered from a stroke. And then after that, we will find wonderful patient information, PDFs and Word documents, which can be used directly in the clinical setting or to educate your patients, excuse me, or to educate your students on how they should educate their patients. So we have information on swallowing problems, evaluation procedures to help patients understand a procedure before they have it done. And we have education documents on various vocal disorders. Let's take a look at one of these. So you have an example. We'll choose the video stroboscopy and you'll see that we have a wonderful PDF document for patients that is nice and clear and easy to understand. And it will outline what this procedure is, what happens during the procedure. They will have some visuals to help them understand what's going to happen. And then some practicalities and follow up information. All right, and then after this patient information, the rest of the icons, we're going to speed through because you've seen them before. We have 3D views or 3D models, but this time taking a systemic approach instead of the regional approach seen in the first icon. After that, alphabetical index to navigate your way, favorite icon to revisit any content easily later on. You can share a link to anything. You can embed any content into a learning management system or into a website. You can download any of the content to use offline or insert into your teaching strategies and some settings that you can change according to your personal preferences. OK, and now we are very nearly at the end of our webinar, so let's do a very quick recap of what we've gone through today. Today, we were really focusing on the surgical and the clinical anatomy of the head and neck region. And like I said, this is really where Primal's clinical content shines through. And we took a look at specifically audiology, otolaryngology and speech language pathology. At the end of the day, these titles give a very focused approach to these clinical specialties within health sciences and we not only got to learn more about the normal anatomy and physiology but we got to see the clinical application of what we are learning about and we got to see examples of lesions and of pathology we got to work through patient information we had surgical procedure videos and just a whole host of wonderful content to really apply our understanding and in our knowledge into the clinical setting which at the end of the day is the end goal of teaching anatomy and physiology. We're all here to try and create competent and confident healthcare practitioners. Okay, but that is officially the end of my training session. So I've now just jumped back into the meeting and I've stopped sharing my screen and I'm gonna hop over into the chat box. If you have any comments, or questions before we end off today's session, please feel free to ask your questions in the chat box now. While I wait a few moments to see if anyone's typing any questions, I once again just want to highlight that once this webinar series is finished, we will send you a link to a recording of this session on YouTube. And if you're wanting shorter form training videos, either for yourselves or for your students, please look up Learning Curve SA on YouTube and you'll find a wealth of training resources online there. OK, it doesn't seem that there are any questions. So the last thing I would like to say is thank you for your time and your attendance today. I really hope that this has been a helpful and um, interesting session for you. We also hope to see you in our future monthly webinars in the future. Just a gentle reminder to please share the webinar invitations that we send to you with your students because we also host student webinars the week after our staff webinars. Next week, we have student webinars also focusing on the clinical anatomy of the head and neck. And we'd love to see all of your students there and help them maximally benefit from their access to primal pictures. OK, so I think I will conclude things there. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you again for your attendance and please stay warm and stay well as we enter the winter season. 
Goodbye, everyone.